Hello and welcome back. Today I will be going over the reverse integer problem on lead code. The problem asks us to write an algorithm that can reverse an integer, and then return the reversed value. Whenever you reverse a number, you're taking the last digit of your original number and making it the first digit of your new number. To do this, we're going to be using the modulus function. When you use this function in a scenario such as x mod y, you get the remainder of dividing x by y. If x was 6 and y was 4, we would get 2 as our result. The reason we want to be using modulus here is to help isolate the digits. We know that whenever we want to shift the decimal point in a number by 1, we either multiply or divide by 10. In this case, if we divided our original number by 10 and took the remainder, the remainder would be the digit at the end of the number, since we shifted the decimal point of our number to isolate a digit. Once we've isolated this digit, make sure to save it in a variable called digit. Now that we have our isolated digit, we have to turn it into our reversed number. We can start this by making a new variable called reversed, which represents our reversed number. To add the digit, we have to multiply reversed by 10. Why? When we multiply a number by 10, we shift the entire number to the left and add an extra zero, which is where our digit goes. So what we do is we set the reversed equal to reversed multiplied by 10, and then we add the digit. Since we've done that, we just have to divide the original number by 10 to ensure that when we loop this again, our reverse number actually adds on the next digit of the original number. Speaking of loops, you want to store all of this under a while loop. We're going to keep this code running until the original number is equal to 0, since that's when we know if the reversing is working. So place this code under a while loop that runs when the original number is not equal to 0. Now when we put all of our code together, it should look like this. If you came to learn how to reverse a number, then there you go. However, if you're here for the lead code problem, then let's keep going. While our lead code problem does ask us to reverse a number, we have a special challenge in front of us. If our reverse number goes outside the bounds of a 32-bit integer, then we should return 0. This means that if our number is smaller than negative 2 to the 31st, or bigger than 2 to the 31st minus 1, we should return 0. However, we're told that we cannot store our numbers in 64 bits, so this is not as easy as we think. Let's think about what we have to do. While we know that this issue of reversing a number over the integer limit only happens when our number is in the billions, if we reverse the number 900,843,000, our number still stays in the 100 millions, no issue there. But if our number is a billion, it has the possibility of going outside the integer limit when reversed. To deal with this, Let's put an if statement right after we get our variable reversed in the reversing loop to ensure that we can return 0 when we see that the reverse number is greater than the integer limit. We know that we simply cannot compare the reverse number to the integer limit since an integer over the integer limit will change completely. So I have an idea. Why don't we check our number one step back? Every time we multiply by 10, we increase the size of that number by one digit. So if we divide by 10, we go back a step, so let's do that. We can also take the absolute value of the reverse number, so we do not have to make two different if statements. So far, we're comparing the reverse number to the integer limit divided by 10, and we can also add another condition in there, checking the length of the number. We know this only happens when the original number has a length of 10, so we can add that condition on there. Finally, we can add a condition for a counter. To show you what I mean, let's add a count variable to the end of our loop here, Every time the loop goes through, we add 1 to count, and when the reverse number is a factor of 10 away from having 10 digits, the count variable would equal 8, which is why we can add that final condition. When we add all of this code together, it looks like this. And when all of these conditions are true, then we can return 0 as our number. Otherwise, we just return the reverse number. And if you submit this code into leak code, you can see that it submits and it works. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comment section below, and goodbye.